I think it's interesting that you both say that this game has a smaller fan base, just because, like, my recollection of it really is that this is the one that sort of had the, the first big crossover hit. Like, this is oh, the sure, one absolutely. that, like, really made yeah. Elder Scrolls a household name. Yeah, it's just I that think it's, Skyrim it's, blew it out of the water and nobody who's yeah, a fan Skyrim of Skyrim like, has supplanted it so completely at this point in the popular cult. I think this is just generally a thing where the, the, the factors of, like, video gaming becoming popular around the Xbox era and then, like, ultimately the, the, the early 360 era, like, it's it lacks the diehard fandoms of earlier, like, PC and retro console gaming and a contemporary, like, viewpoint and perspective that games that have been, like, remat that are constantly being remastered and kind of reserved up have to modern generations. Where, like, there's this kind of... There's this pit of nostalgia from, of, like, 2002 or three to, like, I don't know, maybe 2009, 2008-ish, where it's just games that kind of got memory hold because even though they were objectively more popular than their predecessors... They didn't have the kind of popularity that stuck around from after the obsolescence of the console. Like, I think I that, that there's a lot of shitty 90s games that people think about every day much more often than think about a random middling success from uh, the Xbox. Or from, like, the early wave of the Xbox 360. I wouldn't say this was a middling success, though. I mean, this was still... Oh, sure. Big, it's just we don't think about it too much. Here's the other thing. I think that everybody was really into this game and continued to kind of be active in gaming circles probably thought that Skyrim was good. Yeah. And at that point, you may as well just talk about Skyrim. Like, why, why talk about Oblivion when you also like Skyrim and everyone wants to talk about Skyrim? Did that guy die back there? That like, I, I enjoy the Residence's Bad Day on the Midway, but if I'm talking to people about FMV games and they want to talk about Mist, I'm just going to talk about Mist. I'm not going to try to talk about Bad Day on the Midway to them. I, I also think that... I, I think you're right, and I also think a lot of that has to do with a lot of these games being... The, the mid to late 2000s was the era of both finding your feet in... Oh. Not just finding your feet in 3D, but finding a way to sort of, like, franchiseify things. Because I can think of lots of titles, lots of franchises that have entries from that time period that um, have largely been forgotten. Like, like how Resident Evil 4 just received sort of a glowing uh, remake, and then whenever, hey, are you also going to remake Resident Evil 5 comes up, they're kind of like, no. <laughs> No, don't don't worry about oh, that. We're well. probably not going to do that. Um, yeah. or, I mean, there's, or a, there's like obviously Mortal a lot Kombat. to that. Yeah. Well, but, but or like like Mortal Kombat Four. Nobody really likes to talk about Mortal Kombat Four or Five. Um, like there there's there's a lot of games. You know, uh, Invisible War came out and and was the first console release of a Deus Ex game, and everyone kind of forgot about it in part because it sucked, but also in part because just like, you know, people loved Human Revolution. Uh, and that came out in 2011, I want to say, 2012, something like that. I like how we have an arrow in our neck. 2011 feels right. But yeah, there's just lots of, like, middle of a franchise entries in the 2000s that are not old enough to be the nostalgia originating thing from the 90s, but also not new enough or, or fresh enough to be, like, what we think of when we think of the franchise. And I think Oblivion falls right into that. I'm looking at a Wikipedia article, and I'm going to provide a few other examples of games that fall to that. And if you ask yourself, what are these? Yeah, that's it. That's the point. Uh, Advent Rising. Barbarian. I think people do remember Blood Rain, but Is not for... Oh yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I'm, yeah. I'm just going through. I'm just going through, and I'm looking for games that like I kind of recognize, and that weren't like shovelware, but that there just really are not people out here shooting for it, right? Like, that was advantageous. I remember like, Dark Watch. 
you know this is not i needed these to be denser this is not compelling content i'm going to stop doing this well, but I mean, think of like Hit Hitman uh, Absolution, or even Hitman Blood Money. Hitman Blood Money is is a game that people liked, even. Um, but Blood Money came out in two thousand eight. It's not the old original OG Hitman, nor is it the new modern emergent gameplay Hitman everyone loves. It's Blood Money, a well received but kind of just forgotten title that nobody is clamoring for a remake of. Right? Like yep. it, it came out, it did well, people liked it. Uh, it. The franchise didn't die as a result of it or anything, but also like. It exists. No one talks about it in 2023. If you could find somebody that bought it and played it and liked it, then great. You know, the, that person will happily talk about it with you if they can remember it. But, like, it, it doesn't have a community. I'm trying to think of other, like, long-running franchises that sort of started in the late 90s, early 2000s and then had similar entries that were just sort of forgotten in the middle late 2000s. I mean, Deus Ex Infinity War. Uh, episodes from Liberty City. Grand Theft Auto 4 in general. No one talks about GTA 4. That's a good point. Like, that was a, or the that was original, a smash hit success. The original Red Dead Redemption. Uh, Red Dead Revolver. Um, which I know is not an open world game. It's not the same thing. But no one talks about it. Wait, Thief Red Deadly Red Shadows. Revolver? Was there Red a... Dead Revolver yeah. is the is yeah. the first of the three Red Dead games. Oh, I had no idea there was a previous game to Red Dead Redemption One. Yeah, Red it was, Dead I mean, Redemption it was just 1 like came out in like two thousand seven or something, right? So yeah, no, Red Dead Revolver is two thousand four. It was it was just a shooter, and Redemption was I think two thousand ten. Yes. Yeah, oh uh, like yeah. Pose the mic. Amazing. Behold. Actually, can we talk about Thief Deadly Shadows? Holy shit. Talk about, like, a game that was just on the wrong side of every shift in, like, yeah. gaming. It, it, like, it's like, hey, we're gonna try to, we're gonna make this Thief game, and we're not gonna try to make it some random other bullshit like Thorf would. But we are going to upgrade all of the graphics and technology in such a way that the core gameplay loop is radically unsatisfying. It it it, it kind of breaks my heart because this, the, there are bits in, in 3 that are really not bad. The story the isn't is terrible. We've got the Everyone remember, remembers the cradle, right? Move like, up. there are bits there that are really good, and then... As a as a as a collective experience, as a as a holistic experience, it just does not work. It's like a pan and scan widescreen badly colorized VHS copy of Thief. But it's it's so lovingly done, and that's what breaks my heart, is like this is not Thief Oops. 4. Thief, Thief 4 is is a train wreck of unimaginable incompetence and failure at every level. Right. Thief 3 is not that. Thief 3 has really good ideas. It's it's just a, a a lot of really good ideas bumping up against a lot of really bad implementation, and and that you kind know, of a bunch of like hardcore limitations of that era. Like you can't make you, like you, the reason every level feels like a shoebox in Deadly Shadows is because you had to make everything high definition for consoles, and they couldn't handle sprawling high definition levels. It, it's the same engine as Infinity War or uh, Invisible War. Yeah, and it's I mean, the same problem, basically. Like, they, they both came out at a very bad time, technology-wise. I You know, we have really reached a nice... Like, I think one thing we don't necessarily talk about a lot, at least explicitly, when we talk about evolving game design principles and, like, kind of generations of games, is how much the size of the available market determines what the output looks like. And I think we have hit, for all the all right. serious we problems facing game area. developers now, you we've hit such a point where if your game is going to be a fluke hit at Don't all, it can look like pretty much whatever it has to look like. Yeah. Like, if it's not one of the AAAs that need to sell 10 billion copies or else the entire development team uh, has to march into the city, like, it's... If it's, like, an independent project, like, it can pretty much look like whatever you need to make it look like to get the job done. And, you, I mean, you're entering the same lottery as everybody else. 
I mean, Among Us I mean, doesn't we... look particularly amazing, and then you also have stuff like Cruelty Squad, which did real well, and it looks like Cruelty Squad. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, we're, we're also at that point where, Watch out! like, AAA games are kind of, if not dying, certainly in a, a rather dire straits as far as, like, they, they take so much money and so much time and so many people to build now that there's just so many fewer of them now than there were 10 years ago. Like, I haven't... They're, I don't know if I've not dying. They just feel like a game be. since, like, maybe Horizon Forbidden West. I don't yeah, think I bought I, one all year. I don't actually know what a serious AAA game looks like for me anymore. Like, is Sea of Thieves a serious AAA video game? No. Yeah, okay. Shit, let me go I through. I would say definitely no, not, not Sea of Thieves, like... Psychonauts 2 isn't really AAA either, right? No. Well, it was, that's the other problem, is like, we, we have basically the, the resurgence of AA games, but we don't have any words to describe those that people generally agree upon, so just everything that's not AAA is indie. Even though there are okay, very big I... differences between, like, you know, the walking simulator that was made by two people and, like, Psychonauts. Okay, I think I know what the last AAA game I played was. Deathloop was a AAA game, right? Like, right? Come on. I did not Death play yeah. Deathloop. Yes, that is a AAA game. I didn't play it. So. Okay, I played it. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't really get into it. I didn't care for it much. Am I supposed? To... I mean, this this oh, kind of it? smacks of like what is or is not um, indie, just in reverse, right? What is or is not AAA? Because I I played Midnight Suns. It's a Marvel licensed game by Praxis. But it also obviously does not have the budget of something like like a uh, death loop. Like it, it's not, it's not yeah, quite guess that what? big. Guess what? The sequel's definitely yeah. not going to have the budget of something like death loop. <laughs> oh, it, it's a really good game, and I'm sad that it didn't do well. I sure like swinging my sword. Is there a way to buy the Morbius DLC without buying the actual game itself? I didn't know there was Morbius DLC. It just came out. <laughs> Excuse me while I partake in the Count's fruit. That is not a metaphor. I, I guess the last AAA game I picked up was Modern Warfare 2, and I only did that for the stupid video. Yeah, I mean, honestly, for me, before uh... Deathloop, it was probably Cyberpunk 2077 back in... Well, okay, I bought it, I bought it on release, and then I refunded it, like, ten hours later. Like, is... like, 20 minutes, like, an hour of gameplay in. Was Modern Warfare 2 after, um, Battlefield, the latest Battlefield game? Because we did play yes. that. Modern Modern Warfare 2 came out in, okay. uh, November. Alright. Or October, somewhere in there. Look at this count. His, his room full of all his worthless stuff. Because there's no good loot in Oblivion. Yeah, I... shit. I... I guess I just don't really play AAA games anymore. But also, like, the the field of what a AAA game is, is has kind of gotten narrower, too, because a lot of the games that you used to, you know... You would either get them as a AAA game or not at all, and now have room in the indie space to, you know... Oh. To me, like, the only thing that defines a AAA game is that it's very expensive and at least a little bit boring. Yeah. Well, I would say it's it's a, you know, a flagship game that is done by, you know, a large studio and publisher that has, you know, a, a game budget that is now equivalent is to a movie with... budget. Lying face down in a pool of his own blood. Even in death. Look, what was what was the use of this count, dude? This far, I'd put you down where you stand. Uh, we can have that fight if you the want. Ring? Do you have it? That was a rare example of at least getting to like have a personality in this game. I shall make sure yeah. it's protected for the time when a new count is crowned. Here. I will say that that line had big like guy larping as the bad guy energy. 
Like, I, again, I mean that in a very literal sense. I mean, that literally sounds like a dude well, who doesn't have a lot of idea of what a bad guy should sound like who decided that he's going to be the bad guy this time. I forgot that he took his own um, Quirus off and gave it to us. Um, okay, why is the conversation still going? What? Why are we in time? No, no, he's pretty happy about it. Still. He's in a good mood about Take this. Time. Take your time. Take your time, Josh. You know, that's wholesome. Yeah. Thank you. We all need to remember that every so often. my ear citizen but he's still wearing the rest of his getup so he's just got a fucking like a doublet and then just pants made out of chain mail that must be so uncomfortable like yeah. just wearing chain mail pants and gloves and not chain mail shirt how do you keep chain mail pants up i imagine a belt wouldn't work yeah, um i well, mean like usually you know, they're they're like yeah the the mail it, it, is separate from your pants and you can actually see that like that is the case here this guy is wearing yep. pants and then he's got yep. mail like fastened to it so plus like a belt will keep that up if that's what the belt's for yeah unless you need something that's continuing to weigh on priory the wet I, I like. I the, got an the... idea. Let's not go back to Wayne and Priory and just have Martin follow us to the rest of the game. Sean John Bean's voice acting rides the the line exactly between like utter disinterested boredom and like a sexy smolder, and like it just oscillates between those two emotions. He is like as far as appearances go. Where'd he go? One of the hotter NPCs in the game, although not that hot, because he's still got all the weird wrinkly potato face stuff going on. But I hope I can help. It's it's like one level above I'll like an asthma again. voice, right? Like an ASMR voice. Like it's not quite that quiet. He's not whispering to you, but it is just sort of. <laughs> so like it comes across as like a smolder to me, like like a slightly sexy. Yeah, I'll go get the eggs from the store. That's what you want, isn't it? <laughs> like. Just, like, saying the most banal shit, but, like, in a sexy way. Alright, first things first, let's go sell all of this worthless shit that we got. We're gonna get five dollar. I just, I had some interest, some questions about, like, midi uh, chainmail leggings. Because I, I remembered some weird shit I'd seen some one time. And when I went to an article to look it up, there was a very, like, dry rundown of historical armoring tips and pieces of advice for reenactors. And then a big banner ad depicting, like, a sexy armor for Skyrim. Like a, <laughs> like a mod, like a sexy armor mod. The vibe could not have been less appropriate. Is Martin just hanging out? Hey, Martin. Yeah, there he is. I don't think that house has a guest bedroom either. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go sell this stuff, and then that will be good for this episode to end. That and Mumbles will be quite happy that she managed to miss all of Kavash when she comes back next week. People say I, do good I think you guys oversold how bad that was. It's only bad after you do I rushed through the Oblivion Gate. If, if we had done, like, a, oh, we go and see everything in that thing, that would have taken two weeks. But I think that's that's sort of the, the design ethos that drove it, right? Like, it is all additional hashtag content. The more the more Oblivion there is, the more you're getting your money's worth. What can I God, yep, you? that's it. That is the encapsulation of why I don't want to play triple A games. <laughs> a fine. You got it. An excellent bargain. Come back. If I can't fix it.